Hello, Meg Miller, Adult Services Librarian at Pflugerville Public Library here with another Crafty at Home Cafe video. Um, let's get this started. I'll show you. We've got our packages for those 30 folks who have signed up. Um, this time you'll be picking up an envelope. Uh, we are doing tissue paper painting for this craft. The watercolor paper that I found actually didn't fit very well in those bags you've picked up crafts before in. So we've gone with the envelope. Let me show you what's inside. Um, first and foremost, you're going to need your watercolor paper. Um, this one's really cool. It's actually going to fold itself into kind of a canvas. So once you're done with your project, you'll be able to stand it up somewhere um, around. In addition to that, we do have the instructions for how to fold that into a canvas shape. For this project, we are using something called bleeding tissue paper. Um, we ordered these so you have a little bag that has um, I believe three of each of the different colors that came in the pack that we ordered as well as one white crayon that we can use to kind of make designs in this um, in relief. In addition to that, you have a let's go with this, um, very handy little water spritzer that we're going to use um, to wet down both the paper and the tissue paper. Um, so you'll need to fill this with water yourself. There isn't water inside of it. Um, and then we'll use that to spray the project. This is going to be a fairly messy one. This is bleeding tissue paper. It's um, dyed my TV tray a little bit, although I was able to clean it up um, with just a little bit of cleaning solution and a damp rag. Um, but we do recommend that you wear older clothes that you maybe don't want to get dirty or stained or perhaps if you have an apron. Um, also to keep this maybe a slightly cleaner process for you, we are providing a foam brush that you can use to tap down the pieces of tissue paper. Um, and well before uh, we've got to our current situation, we've had gloves in our fab lab, so I was able to pull a pair of gloves for everyone to use um, so that you don't stain your fingers. Although again, it does come off um, with some very excellent hand washing. So those are all of the things that you should find in your pack of supplies. Now this kind of project will work with some regular tissue papers that you purchase from the Dollar Tree or anywhere. Um, but you don't get quite the same um, coloration as with those. I did test out some of those ahead of time before I latched on to the bleeding tissue paper, which we did just order off of Amazon. Um, so let's get started crafting. All right, so we've got all of our pieces for the craft. I'm going to go ahead and put the gloves on. Um, so this time around, I don't stain my fingers for a few days. I think I'm probably also going to use a foam brush. Got a little bit of water in my spritzer. I've got my paper. I'm going to want to decide if I'm going to have it be a landscape version um, of design when it stands up or if it's going to be portrait, long ways. Um, and for now, you don't have to worry about picking the pieces off. It's a little bit easier to do with the paper completely flat. I've got my little bag of tissue paper squares in a range of colors and my white crayon. Um, I did do some testing with the tissue paper so you can um, either pick the tissue paper up while it's still wet or allow it to dry on the paper. Um, when I lifted the tissue paper wet uh, the colors I got, so there's a pale blue, a yellow, a peach, and a white. White obviously isn't really going to do very much for you with this um, white paper. Um, also lifting when wet, we've got the maroon color, magenta, the kelly green, kind of the purple color, um, or indigo maybe, a lighter teal, the orange, pink, light green, and then the last of the colors here are the... Um, red, blue, the darker green. Um, this one is actually the black, brown, uh, the lighter orange, there's a lavender, and then the darker teal color. Um, so you can see you get a pretty good amount of coverage and soaking into the paper um, if you remove the tissue paper while it's wet. If you decide to remove the tissue paper after it's dry, you can see that some of the colors do soak in, but you get a little bit better um, with some things. 
if you really just pick it up and allow that color to seep right into the paper. Um, but some are very similar. All right, so that will be up to you and your crafting. One of the things that's included is this white crayon right here. Um, now, if you use the crayon, the crayon wax won't allow for the dye of the tissue paper to sink into the um, watercolor paper. So you can draw a design, write a name. Um, it's going to be a little tough. You're not going to be able to see it um, because it is white crayon on white paper. Um, but you can, and I'm just going to do something very simple. And I'm going to try and do a curse of welcome because maybe I want to have this in the hallway of my house. I'm just going to use this other paper to kind of make sure I have it at least a little bit straight. All right. I'm sure you can't really see, but just the merest hint of the crayon there. You could also just lay color on here first and then later on once it's dry use a black or darker marker um, or paint even to draw a design over top and just kind of use the blending of the watercolor as a background. So we are ready with our paper here um, and I am just going to lightly spritz the paper itself making sure that my tissue papers are out of the way so that they don't get wet and start bleeding before I'm ready for them. Uh, these tissue papers are stacked kind of in color um, so you can just begin laying depending on how you want to overlap different colors I like the pink I'll get some red up here the lighter colors, as we saw, really aren't going to leave much in the way of coloration. So you just want to be careful with, that you're choosing the ones that you really want. There is the line of the edge of the frame, so you want to make sure that when you're putting pieces down, you are actually going all the way to the edge. Um, that way you know your design will, will get all the way to the edge and you won't have any um, white space. Let's see, we need some greens in here. Also doubling up the um, tissue paper is going to give you a bit more of, a bit of a darker hue to the dye that gets put down. Uh, we definitely need some yellow there. Got a little bit of light green over here in the corner. Um, without having sprayed the whole thing, I don't want to pile up on top of each other too much. Um, so now I'm going to start spraying the tissue paper itself. And you can already see up here we've got some of that dye really starting to move. You can spray each square of tissue paper as you lay it down. Oh, I did say I was going to use my little foam brush. We'll use that in a minute. Um, or as I've done here, I kind of blocked out my colors where I want everything. And then I am spraying all of my tissue paper at once. So you make sure you really get a solid soaking in there. Again, this is why you want to have something put down on the ground. The surface that you're working on. Um, let's see, do I want to go there? It's a little bit more orange up here at the top. All right, so there, and if I move it a little bit, you can see hopefully down here that water is running. So almost like we do with the um, paint pouring, we've got this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull these off while they're wet. 
Um, as you can see, some of them, when you pull them up, the color isn't really going to get there. You can use the tissue paper itself to really blot back down that color. Um, and I'm just going to create a pile right over here. Gently pull up on tissue paper. Some of it's going to want to come up a little bit easier than others. Again, if the color didn't go through, just kind of tapping it down. And as I continue to remove, we can see here, there's the beginning of my first letter. This is why having the gloves is important because if I didn't wear these gloves, I would be getting this coloration all over my fingers. Oh, that one. The pinks. A little. And what's great about this is you can actually go back if there's an area where you don't feel like there, one of my letters really wasn't quite coming in all the way. And there, now I'm getting the bottom of that. Continue along, revealing more of my word here. Oh, that orange really showed through very well. So now that I've removed all the tissue paper, I can see that in this area here, I really want some more color. Um, so I've still got stuff, tissue paper that I haven't used yet. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a second layer. And this time around, I'm going to go kind of one square at a time, tap my square down. I can also use my foam brush. That will also move that die around. Getting it right out to the corners and then remove it and there I've gotten a whole lot better coverage there and let's do that again over here with some red we've got some red in that corner I want to beef up that red a little put it, those colors just a little too close together and they've kind of muddied up but it, actually when it dries it's probably going to look really cool Maybe you'll decide to put this together in a little bit more of a way that maybe does a rainbow or just your favorite colors. Already this portion of it is beginning to dry and I'm just kind of going through some of the white spots and using here to brush my color in. Let's see, do I have any purple left? Nope, of course, I used all the purple. That should not be surprising to anyone who knows me. And I've got this spot right over here that just doesn't want to take color. Same for right there. I think that looks really cool. Okay, so we're going to wait for this to dry. Um, and then we'll be able to pop off the extra pieces and fold it together. Oh, I do really like this. Maybe a little bit more... Let's make this a little bit more yellow. Really get that yellow in there. Pick it back up. There we go. All right. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. All right. And so we're going to, through the magic of video, give this a little bit to dry. Um, the paper itself has kind of warped a little bit with the water. Um, so if you've got something, you can lay over it to keep it flat. You're going to want to make sure that whatever you lay on it, you realize some of this um, dye and ink might get on it. So perhaps lay a paper towel layer over whatever it is before you put it uh, something on to kind of keep it flat, that'll make folding it into the uh, shape of the canvas a little bit easier as well. Okay, so we've basically completed. I've allowed it to dry for a little while. I can tell I didn't quite match up my ease here when I was trying to beef up my lines, but that's all right. Um, you can still kind of see that it says welcome. And hopefully yours will be a little bit better than mine turns out. Um, it has been pointed out to me that sometimes following along, I get a little bit ahead of you guys in completing things, and that's just the magic of the video. We want to make sure those videos, these videos aren't so long. Um, so please remember you can pause at any time. 
Um, you can watch it through, then attempt it on your own. Um, we'd love seeing what you've done. Um, thank you also to Brenda who reminded me that our YouTube comments are turned off. But if you've created something with one of our crafts, we'd love to see it on our Facebook page. Or if you're on Instagram and share it, um, we'd love to have you tag us. So let's go ahead and put this together into our um, canvas print. So each of the corners you'll see are able to pull off. So I'm just going to pull those four off first. There is pieces that are able to fold and kind of come off a little easier. I definitely was purposeful in making sure that some of my color made it to the edges so that when I do stand this up, ultimately it will be um, color all the way up to the edge. Some pieces didn't quite get it. So now we've got our corners torn off and we want to flip it over. I'm going to do the short ends first and then the longer sides. So on each of my folds, I'm just going to kind of match those folds up right now. Get those going. There are pieces here on the corner. So I'm just going to fold that there, making sure that my little slits are open as well. This time I'll go from the inside and work my way out, just kind of creasing those folds. So then I can roll it up right here. This time making sure my cuts are there. There's also a cut right in the middle of each of these shorter sides there. So now I'm ready to roll in my other side. You'll see I've got some flaps here. Creasing my folds. Last fold. All right, so they, my two little corners are gonna come up and they're actually gonna slide right into each of these edges. And then my flaps here are gonna slide right into those cuts on your shorter edge. The first side's a little bit tougher to get together than the second. Once you've got this good first side in, it holds the frame and allows that second side to go a lot better. And the first creases, creasing before you actually tuck it in really helps make that box solid box shape. All right, so we've got our last side. Crease my folds. I'll start out on this one. Go to my next one. And then my final one which is actually a little bit easier to see if I pop it up just a little. And then my flaps, make sure I've got those folds. So they're gonna come straight in here. And my piece is gonna slide into the notch. That's my notch on this side, there we go. Tucking in each of my sides. And there we have my nice little welcome. I can stand it up somewhere in the front area of my house, in my room, anywhere. Um, we hope you have a lot of fun with this craft and we look forward to you joining us on the next one.